everyone, welcome back to my channel, it's Helen, and today I have a skincare empties video for you all. I've been meaning to film this video for such a long time now because a lot of these products are even from the beginning of 2020. Before I go off rambling, let's just jump right into the video. So I just wanted to note that in the beginning of 2020, I didn't really post too much skincare content at all. I did post a couple of YouTube videos here and there, but I didn't have that much traction. Therefore, my skincare collection was a lot more of a normal size. However, when quarantine started and my TikTok started picking up, I got the opportunity to be sent PR from a lot of skincare companies, hence my larger than average collection. So a lot of these products are from the beginning of 2020 and I do have a lot of products that are on their way to being an empty which I'll cover in another empties video. So my first empty that I have to show you guys is the Inculus Oat Cleansing Balm. I heard a lot of hype around this product even before I started posting skincare content and I really wanted to try it out for myself because I've been using like the Vanilla Co Clean at Zero and the Hamish All Clean Balm for years now so I thought it's time to change it up. It's such a big bottle and it's relatively affordable and you could get it at Sephora. Unfortunately, I didn't really like this one. It has like some sort of gritty texture to it. I'm pretty sure that gritty texture is from the oats and I also felt like it didn't really cleanse off my makeup. I wear a a lot of waterproof makeup, especially like mascara and eyeliner. A lot of cleansing oils and cleansing balms nowadays can take that off and I don't need a separate eye and lip remover. However, this one just didn't cut it for me and it left a weird film on my skin. Overall, I'm not a fan, but I still finished it because I did spend my own money on it. I think there are a lot of other better cleansing balms out there on the market and you can just pass over to this one. I understand that the hype is there because it's such an affordable price, but I think there's a lot of other cleansing balms that are better than this one. The next item is the Hunts Skin PHA Pore Cleansing Balm. So I bought this cleansing balm after using the Inkyless Cleansing Balm for a couple times and realizing that I really didn't like it. I still wanted to try out a new cleansing balm besides the Vanilla Co one and the Hamish one. I bought this one off Soka Glam and I do really like it. It does say it's a PHA cleansing balm, but I didn't really notice too much of an exfoliating property to it. It did remove all of my makeup, which for me is like the bare minimum for a cleansing oil. This product does contain polyethylene and I know a lot of people people are concerned about that in their cleansing balms. When I bought this product, I didn't really know about polyethylene as an ingredient, so I didn't really think much about it. It does work really well, but if you are worried about that, I would just maybe stray away from this one. Even though I do like this product, I probably wouldn't repurchase because I do think I like the Hamish and the Vanilla Co a little bit better than this, just because the texture of those cleansing balms are a little bit more smooth and emollient. I definitely want to try the Hanskin cleansing oils because I heard they're a lot better than their cleansing balms. The next cleansing oil empty is the Ionic Calendula Complete Cleansing Oil. If you have seen any of my TikTok videos or any of my other YouTube skincare videos, you guys know that I love this product. I think the ingredients are great and it really works well for a lot of different skin types. And of course, it does pass my criteria because it does thoroughly remove my makeup without leaving a film on my face. It's also at a really nice and affordable price point. I believe this is like 20 bucks or a little bit under $20. I highly recommend this for most skin types and I think it's a great option. I definitely would repurchase this again. The only water-based cleanser that I emptied for this video is the Then I Met You Soothing Tea Cleansing Gel. I bought this off their website in the duo, so it came with the cleansing balm. I really enjoyed this duo. I used the cleansing balm, I think, twice, and I really liked it. It's definitely more up there on the price point, but I feel like it's a more luxurious experience. As for this cleanser, I definitely think it also provides that luxurious experience. The texture of this is a nice jelly consistency, and it foams up into a really nice gentle lather. And it definitely does not strip my skin at all, but I do feel like it's actually cleansing my skin. I will say for the price point and the size of this, I feel like this cleanser didn't wow me enough for me to justify paying that much for it. So overall, I think there are other gel cleansers that I like better than this one at a more affordable price point, but I definitely think that this is still a really great option. Next up are my vitamin C serums and this category is probably one of my favorite active ingredients just because I think it made the biggest difference in my skin when I was first starting out. The first one that I have to show you is the Goodall Green Tangerine Vita C Dark Spot Serum. So this is actually not made out of pure vitamin C, it's made out of a vitamin C derivative. So I find that this is a lot more gentle and a lot slower at showing results than a lot of other vitamin C serums I've tried in the past. This product is super popular in Korea and I do find that it gives my skin a nice overall 
Pimple Glow. I do think that my skin likes pure vitamin C, so I'm okay with actually using those kinds of products instead of a vitamin C derivative. But if you don't want to miss out on the whole vitamin C game, but your skin is just not having it with pure vitamin C, I would try out a vitamin C derivative serum, and this one is a really good option. So personally, I wouldn't repurchase this for my skin because I think there are better options with pure vitamin C, but I can see this as a really great choice if you do have extra sensitive skin or you're just starting out in the vitamin C game. The next vitamin C that I have to show you guys is is the Polish Choice C15 Super Booster. This is a 15% vitamin C serum with vitamin E as well as ferulic acid. So I do like a lot of Polish Choice products and this is probably one of my favorites. I was really intrigued by this product because it is 15% pure vitamin C and I find that 10 to 15% works really well for my skin type. I also saw that this was one of Polish Choice best sellers so I wanted to test it out for myself and I definitely was not disappointed. However, my wallet did hurt a little bit when I bought this product. It's definitely on the more pricey side but in this case, I think you get what you pay for. I had a couple of darker sunspots on my face when I started using this and I noticed that after like two or three weeks that they started to fade really quickly and of course, I just like that overall overall glow that vitamin C gives to your face and this serum definitely shows the results. However, if I could go back in the past, I would probably store this in the fridge. I just noticed once I reached like halfway through the bottle, it started to oxidize really quickly so I had to use it up really quickly. I can definitely see myself repurchasing this vitamin C serum again, especially if I do see some dark spots rising up. The next vitamin C that I have is the Good Skin Day C Today Serum. This includes 10% pure vitamin C and Camu Camu. This has got to be my favorite vitamin C of this year. As I said before, I just found that 10 to 15% vitamin C works well for my skin and this also definitely showed results. However, I will say though, when I started using this product, I had significantly less dark spots because of that Polish Choice vitamin C. I still noticed that this gave me that overall glow and just felt very nice and soothing on my skin. It didn't feel like it was tingling at all even when I first applied it. This serum is also a lot more affordable than the Polish Choice one. This one's around the $25 mark and I think it works great for that price point. Another thing that I want to mention is that this serum doesn't feel sticky or oily at all. I really appreciate that because I tend to find a lot of vitamin C serums leave that sort of tacky feeling. I would definitely repurchase this again and I'm also giving this away in a couple of my Vlogmas giveaways. Next up, I want to talk about my essences and toner empties. This first empty is from Primera and it's the Miracle Seed Essence. If you guys have watched any of my videos or my Instagram stories, you guys know how much I love this product. There's something about this product that I can't pinpoint, but it always makes me want to go back to it. Like this doesn't just feel like any other hydrating toner. I saw someone comment on my other video saying they also really like this essence and they said that their skin just drinks it up and that's exactly how I feel. They said it so much better than I did. The texture of this product is slightly more viscous than water. This really gives my skin that plump and dewy hydration that I don't feel like I need tons of layers for. Like one layer is enough for this product. I feel like it works well for my morning and nighttime routine and I just know that my dry and dehydrated skin will just look and feel really nice after applying this. A downside of this is that it definitely is on the more pricey side. This essence does have patented, patented, pa patent, pat, yeah, patented technology from Amore Pacific, so I guess that's what you're really paying for. I will say though, I bought this off Sephora when they had 50% off, so I didn't have to pay that much for this. But I honestly think I would pay full price for this. If you do want to try it out and see if it works for your skin, I highly recommend getting it 50% off. You guys, were, you guys probably already know my final verdict is that I would repurchase this product. Product. I'm also planning to give this away in one of my vlogmas giveaways, so make sure you tune in there The next product that I have to show you guys is the I'm from mugwort essence So I've been meaning to try out I'm from mugwort products for the longest time now ever since they were released on wish trend I hear so many skincare content creators talk about this product, so I wanted to try it out for myself I really loved how calming I really loved how calming and soothing it was for my skin because I do have a lot of like rosacea And my skin can be really reactive. I found that this was really nice during the summertime when my skin was a little bit more irritated because of the heat. This product does have a really nice slip to it, so I think you could also use it as like a hydrating essence as well. But it's definitely not as hydrating as like the Primero one. I personally really like this product, but because I was introduced to Mugwort, I tried out a lot of other Mugwort products after this. And I think I found a Mugwort essence that worked for my skin type a little bit better. So personally, I wouldn't repurchase this product, but I think this would be a great product to try out if you are interested in the effects of Mugwort on your skin. Last but not least, I have another Then I Met You product, and it's the Giving Essence. I know it's about the product and not the packaging, but look how cute and pretty it is. 
And also the product was like a nice magenta color. I was really excited to try out this product because I did like the Then I Met You cleansing duo. This essence does include Galactomyces, which is one of my favorite ingredients in essences because they help the rest of your skincare products to sink in better and have a bunch of other beneficial properties. I did find that this essence was hydrating and even though it was hydrating, there just wasn't that wow factor for me. And also it's a little bit more on the pricey side. So I personally wouldn't repurchase. I actually have two products from the Inky list. These are the Polyglutamic Acid Serum and the Q10 Serum. First off, I have to say that these two are probably some of my favorite items from the Inky list. I've used multiple of both of these, so these are my second empties. Unfortunately, I did not show my other empties because that's before I started creating content. This Polyglutamic Acid Serum is probably one of the best hydrating serums. I like to think of it as hyaluronic acid on X Games mode. When I started noticing a little bit of fine lines on my forehead and also around my eye area, and as well as my smile lines because I'm not going to stop smiling. This product really helped with just plumping up that area and just making it look a lot more full. I heard from some people they don't like the smell of this, but I personally thought it was fine. Also because it's the Inky List, it's relatively affordable and also available at Sephora. As for the Q10 Serum, I like this but for a different reason. I don't see an immediate result from using this serum, but I know it's really important to have antioxidants in your routine to just help protect your skin. And it's one of those things that will help your skin in the long run. I want to add an extra boost of antioxidants into my morning skincare routine just so it can help protect against free radicals from like pollution, UV rays, etc. Q10 is a really great antioxidant to add into your routine and this is relatively inexpensive and I just like the texture of it. It has a gel cream consistency so it was really nice to apply. I would definitely repurchase both of these again. Last but not least for treatment products, I have both of these Curology treatments. Again, when it comes to Curology, everyone thinks it's an ad but in this case it is not. This is just my personal opinion and even if it was an ad, I'll still show you guys my honest opinion. I have the smaller size right here and this full size. So my treatment includes 1% clindamycin, 0.01% tretinoin, and 4% azelaic acid. This is kind of like my first dive into tretinoin. And if you guys don't know what tretinoin is, it's a prescription-based retinol. So it can be pretty harsh. 0.01% is a really low concentration, so it's really great for you guys who are just starting out. However, your curology treatment will depend on your skin type and your age and a lot of other factors. It just depends what the dermatologist would prescribe to you. I noticed a really drastic difference when I started using this because my fine lines did get a lot better and it does contain azelaic acid which really helps with my rosacea. Overall, I'm on my third bottle of this and I think it's a really great segue into the world of tretinoin. So I have two eye creams to show you. The first one is the Aqua Licorice pH Balancing Intensive Eye Treatment. I noticed that this was one of the best sellers on Soko Glam, so I wanted to try it out for myself. Honestly, I didn't really notice much of a difference. It is hydrating, but I feel like you can achieve the same look by just using a really simple moisturizer underneath your eyes. So I probably wouldn't repurchase this product because I just found that it was like an okay hydrating under eye cream, and I feel like it was just a little bit too pricey for me. This next one is the Glow Recipe Avocado Mil Retinol Eye Sleeping Mask. So I purchased this one because as I said before, I wanted an eye cream that actually made a difference to my fine lines. And I know eye creams are just repackaged moisturizers unless they have some sort of specific active ingredient. And in this case, this is retinol. I heard retinol can really help with fine lines, but I was too scared of using like a face retinol around my eye area because they generally advise to avoid your eye area. So in that case, I wanted to get a retinol product that was specifically made for your eyes. I found that this eye mask was pretty gentle. I was pretty scared of it because it had the word retinol in it, but it didn't burn sting my eyes or anything like that. After a month of using this product, I noticed that the fine lines underneath my eyes were appearing to be a little bit less noticeable. And I could definitely tell because I put on concealer basically every single day and it just glided on a lot more smoothly. And it didn't look as cakey as it did before after a long work day. So I honestly think that this product is pretty worth it if you just have a little bit of fine lines. I don't know how good it would be if you have really deep fine lines, but if you're just starting to see it, I think this one can really help. As for moisturizers, my first empty is this Curology The Rich Moisturizer. I actually didn't think too much of this product when I first got it because I just thought the treatment was like the star product, and it is, but I actually really enjoyed this moisturizer. It's like a super simple no fills moisturizer, but I noticed when I actually woke up in the morning, my skin still felt moisturized, which is what I'm going for when it comes to a nighttime moisturizer. I actually have a larger size of this that I'm almost about to empty, so I actually do like this product and I even use it when I'm not using the Curology treatment. This Drunk Elephant Protein 
Rotini Polypeptide Cream is another one of my moisturizer empties. I tried this out in the beginning of 2020 because I heard so many people rave about this product and some people were saying like they were just repurchasing this product over and over again that it's worth the $60 so I just caved and I bought it during the Sephora sale and also just because I needed a moisturizer. Personally, I wouldn't repurchase this product just because I didn't find anything super special about it. I mean the dispensing system is cool but besides like the actual packaging, the product itself I just found like it was a very standard regular lightweight moisturizer and I don't think it's really worth the $60 at all at least for me. I just found that there's better more affordable options out there that give me the same result. Next I have this Innisfree Firming Energy Neck Cream with Fermented Soybean. I know it's called a neck cream but let's be real it's probably just like a facial moisturizer but they just repackaged it as a neck cream. I honestly got it because I just want to try more from the soybean line because I do like their essence. This cream was nothing special. I didn't find myself reaching for this over my other moisturizers and I've honestly just tried better especially from Innisfree. I would not repurchase. Last but not least for the moisturizers we have this Dr. G Red Blemish Clear Soothing Cream. I've mentioned this a lot of times especially during the summer in my skincare videos. I think this is a great option for those of you guys who have oily skin and don't want something too heavy but even for those of you guys who have dry skin like me I have very reactive skin and the sides of my face specifically can get really red and irritated so I noticed that this cream really calmed it down. This is a really nice gel moisturizer but I personally found it a little bit too lightweight for me so I like to layer it up with another moisturizer. This does sink in really quickly though. I can definitely see myself purchasing this again especially when it comes to the hotter summer months. Last but not least, we have sunscreens. Okay, so let's just get this out of the way. I have the Purito Centella Green Level Unscented Sun. If you guys know about the whole Purito controversy, they actually found out that it was a lower SPF than advertised. In case you missed it, I'll link the Purito controversy article down below so you guys can check it out for yourselves. So for obvious reasons, I would not repurchase and I don't even think you can repurchase it right now because they actually took it off all of the retailers. My next sunscreen empty is the Nessa Perfect UV Sunscreen Skincare Milk. I actually picked this up in Japan and I think it was around 35 US dollars. So definitely on the more pricey side when it comes to a sunscreen. I just heard so many great things about this product so I had to try it out for myself. The main reason why I like this product is that it is sweat and water resistant. So a lot of the sunscreens that I tried that are more of a lotion like texture, they're definitely not water resistant or sweat resistant at all. Like if it was the summer and I'm sweating profusely, I definitely have to reapply because I can probably feel it sliding off my face. However, for this one, it was really great to use especially during the summer months when it was very hot. I still felt like I had sunscreen on even though I was sweating throughout the day and that's very important when the UV index is super high. So I would repurchase this for the summer or for times when I'm doing more outdoor activity. The last product that I have to show you guys is the Keep Cool Soothe Bamboo Sun Essence. So I actually like this product a little bit more than the Purita sunscreen before the whole controversy blew up because I felt like this was really lightweight and worked really beautifully under makeup. I also mentioned this in my Best of Beauty 2020 skincare edition. I'll have that linked up above if you guys are interested in checking that out. This is a definite repurchase for me. So I hope you guys enjoyed this empties video. If you guys like these kinds of videos, make sure to press the like button down below and subscribe for new videos every single week. Also, make sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok because I post there pretty much daily. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!